Hello, welcome to part two of our Kazumi Basics Guide. Reminder that this is game version 4.2. In this part, we're going to talk more about strategy and go over some basic game plan elements, which will build on the essential tools we already went over. We'll also suggest some players to check out and cap it off with a brief character summary. Don't forget about all the resource links I mentioned in part one. Those may be very useful to you, especially if you are brand new to the game. I've included those once again in the video description below. Much like part one, don't expect this part to be lengthy since Kazumi is not a complicated character, but enough of that, let's get going. As we mentioned in Essential Moves, Fearless Warrior, often called RSS or Fly instead, is not overly complicated and has options that aren't too dissimilar from a typical Mishima Crouch Dash, which of course she doesn't have. By far the fastest option at I-15 is Fly 2, which looks a lot like a Wind God Fist, and true to Wind God Fist form, it's a normal hit launcher that's negative 10 on block, but it's your main check against people challenging the stance. You don't have any crushed moves from Fly, other than the airborne status at the start of the stance, which is in instant, so that's nice. Fly 2 also acts like a homing move, so it works for anti-step as well. Fly 4-2 is your hell sweep combo, I-18 start, so very quick and of course very punishable on block like any hell sweep. When you get to that mix-up stage of the stance meta, you have two options. Your risky mid options are Fly 1 and Fly 3 plus 4, the latter being a launcher at negative 15 on block, the former being a knockdown wall bouncer at negative 11. Or you can do your safer mids, Fly 3 is at worst negative 7, big plus frames on hit and forces crouch, and a slam on counter hit. Fly 1 plus 2 is plus 4 on block, also a big plus 8 on hit, and a knockdown splat on counter hit. The riskier options are faster at I-19, so better in terms of a true mix-up to the hell sweep, whereas the safer mids are slower, but obviously safer. The riskier mids are important for their speed, though, if your opponent seems to be incredibly good at properly timing an early low block into a late mid block. For the most part, that's where the useful stance options end. You have two other options in Fly Forward 1 plus 2 and Fly 1 plus 3, but they're mostly skill checks since they're far slower than all the other options and can be defended on reaction. The grab does have some nice stats though. It's unbreakable, it's mid, it can splat, and it tracks very well to her right. So not bad reward if you catch them off guard. The biggest issue with fly is that your transition options are fairly limited. Forward three is by far your best option since it's plus eight on block and plus 16 on hit. So on block, fly two is unbeatable, although it still can be crushed, and on hit, it actually floats, making forward three to fly two a combo. So it works just like a mid launcher. Your only other options, namely 1 plus 2, up forward 2, and while standing 3, will only transition on hit, which is fine if you get the hit, but unfortunately they're all punishable on block. Instead, other than forward 3, the most common uses of fly are from neutral against players that are very turtled up and not stepping well, or in a situation with heavy plus frames. Kazumi actually has a decent number of moves that leave her at a good range to fly forward with the stance for a quick mix-up, 1 1 2 and down forward 1 2 being easy examples, and if they sit there, fly 3 hits grounded. Don't forget too that you have a backwards fly. There are no moves from it, but you can do fly forward to backwards or vice versa for some pressure mind games. So again, fly is not anything you'll oppress people with, but it exists and can be used on occasion. The real meat of Kazumi's game though is poking and punishing. Especially in tournament settings, Kazumi is a character that excels at playing a condensed style, meaning that she can play incredibly safe while simultaneously getting high reward for small mistakes on her opponent's end. Despite some nerfs from earlier seasons to her reward scale and utility on some moves, this playstyle is still her strong suit. It's not flashy or complicated, but it works. The obvious warning here is that playing Kazumi like this requires that you build strong fundamentals, particularly spacing, which can't really be taught you just have to put in the time. We can tell you the best moves for that though. You're going to lean really hard on her single jab and 1-1, one, one, so make sure that you can confirm 1-1-2. One, one, down forward 1 is key here as well. As we mentioned, be sure to remind them down forward 1-2 exists, so pay close attention to when they're challenging down forward 1. Down forward 1-2 becomes particularly dangerous at the wall, and also note that it forces full crouch on block, so against characters with weak while standing punishment, you can use this more often. Any character that can only while standing for you is a good example. But even at negative three, you can still set up steps from down forward one on block. Although speaking of the wall, make note that her running one and two have great pushback on block, which helps you get your opponent to the wall quicker. But many of the tools we already mentioned in essential moves you're going to employ to this purpose. Down forward three, down forward four, down three plus four or down four, down back three, and of course, down back four. Even strings like up forward three, four, which leaves you neutral on block. All of these are great at setting up whiffs via a backdash or sidestep on 
on hit, block, or bolt. And things that give sizable plus frames on hit, like down back four, are great also for setting counter hit traps for things like standing four, down forward one two, and back four. But it's not uncommon for a strong Kazumi player to pick just a couple moves other than one one down forward one and run a simple six or seven move play style. Now once you see a whiff, you have a few options. Many Kazumis, assuming you're in range, will constantly hunt for 1-1 one, one to try to get a 1-1-2 one, one, confirm. It's almost risk-free, gives sizable reward given the safety, and since it's 10 frames, you're going to be able to punish very small whiffs very easily, like a whiff jab. Similarly, you'll see many players going for down forward 1-2 whiff punishes. Just be careful here since you cannot confirm down forward 1-2, so be very sure it's going to hit. Otherwise, just watch for down forward 1 to hit, take your plus frames, and keep on poking. Up forward 4 and down forward 2 fall into that same category as they are just as bad if not worse on block, down forward 2 in particular. Down forward 2 does have good range though, it's just a bit slower than her other punishers at I-18. 3-2 and forward 3, which remember can link to fly 2, are common alternatives for big punishes. But on that note, it's also worth talking about her wall standing moves from this perspective as well, since they all serve as great punishers. Wall standing 4-4 is one of the best I-11 wall standing moves in the game, since it's safe, does good damage, gives great plus frames on hit, and can potentially wall splat. The big weakness is that the second hit can be ducked and you can't confirm it. While standing 1-2 is essentially the same type of reward, is barely slower at I-12 and ends mid, but is negative 13 on block and you still have up forward 4 at 15 frames. Then you have wall standing 2 at I-18, which is also a mid launcher, but more range, at least more consistent range, than up forward 4. It's extremely rare for a character to have both a strong I-11 and I-12 wall standing move on top of some typical launch options, so again, she's really good at capitalizing on whiffs, even when the window to do so is small. The only other thing worth mentioning is that you should also occasionally throw in her lesser strings, like down back 2-3-4, which is all delayable, by the way, back 1-2, and back forward to one. Strictly speaking, they are not great if your opponent knows how to deal with them. However, given how small her move list is, it will help to keep them honest by reminding them that those moves exist. Just like every character, you want to give your opponent as much to think about as possible. Beyond that, again, her game plan is not complicated. Just play a stick and move style and then capitalize on mistakes no matter how small. And if they turtle up, be sure to check those ankles and throw in some fly for good measure. As always, we'll start by recommending App Play. It's the best quick info resource out there. Once you start to get comfortable with Tekken and you want to pick up a character on the fly, there's nothing better than this. We've mentioned Arslan before, since he is, of course, considered by many to be one of, if not the best player in the world. Kazumi was the character he played when he first took the major event circuit by storm, so there's plenty out there to see. He still plays Kazumi, so you'll find lots of recent matches too. Since Arslan's play centers around that perfectly annoying fundamental poke style, there's no one better to watch to learn how best to utilize her core moves. And he just did a quick Kazumi guide a couple weeks ago. The only other player we'll mention is another high-level player that has put in significant work with Kazumi at major events in the past, and that's Korea's Ulsan. He too still plays Kazumi often, so between him and Arslan, you really don't need any other resources. Now that being said, as we always say, don't take this list as final since it's only two people. Kazumi's fundamental style goes a long way in tournament formats, so she's been a popular tournament character over the years. Search around and you'll certainly find more. This brings us to the end of our guide. Overall, despite some nerfs, Kazumi is still extremely well-rounded and excels with some of the best fundamental tools in the game. Arslan has explicitly said that he believes she's a perfect character. This isn't literally true since she does have some weaknesses of course, but it is true that her weaknesses are few. One is that she only has a couple of counter hit launchers, so she tends to get a bit less damage on her counter hits than a lot of other characters. Similarly, despite having really solid lows, she lacks that really scary knockdown or high damage low from neutral that many characters have. Paired with a weak grab game, it can be at times difficult to get people to duck and her damage overall is somewhat lackluster. Still, these are largely nitpicky things given that she excels in all the areas that win tournaments, so you'll find plenty of opportunities to collect wins. So keep at it, and I wish you the best of luck in your training. And with that, thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications here on YouTube so that you get alerted when a new video drops. Twitch and Twitter links are also down below. Lastly, huge thank you to our patrons. The more support we have, the more resources we can devote to channel content. So again, I can't thank everyone enough for considering supporting the Patreon. Stay safe, everyone, and we'll catch you next time.